It is my pleasure to introduce our final shortlisted book, Ukraine, the Middle East, and the West. Author, Thomas M. Primak. Publisher, McGill Queens University Press. Country, Canada. Language, English. Prior to the Soviet period, Ukraine enjoyed diverse contacts with its Islamic neighbors, the Crimean Khanate and the Ottoman Empire, and likewise with its Central and Western European neighbors, or more distant neighbors, especially Poland and France. This book reintroduces Ukraine's long overlooked connections beyond Eastern Europe and breaks old stereotypes about Ukrainian isolation. The author provides insight into Ukrainian travelers in the Middle East, from pilgrims in the to the Holy Land, to political exiles in Turkey and Iran. Tatar slave raiding in Ukraine, the poetry of Taras Shevchenko, and the Russian war against Imam Shamil in the High Caucasus. The book explores Ukrainian themes in relation to French writers Honoré de Balzac and Prosper, Prosper Merime, as well as Rembrandt's mysterious painting, The Polish Writer, and Ilya Repin's legendary work depicting Zaporozhian Cossacks writing their sar uh, satirical letter to the Turkish Sultan. I might add that Thomas Primak is a noted historian of Ukraine of Ukrainians in Canada, and now in a sense in the transnational history of Ukrainians. The book's author, Dr. Thomas Primak, is with us tonight, and I invite him to say a few words. Thank you very much, Frank, for those kind words. I'd like to thank the Peterson Literary Fund. I'd like to thank everybody who helped me with this book throughout the past five or six years. It's been a long process. It's actually taken much, much longer than that. It goes back way, way back to the time, actually to the 1970s, I believe. Um, and even the 60s, when I was undergra an undergra undergraduate student of the University of Manitoba, doing medieval history. Uh, when I tackled a thesis to do my MA in uh, medieval history, I decided upon the Crusades and uh, studied one particular religious order, the Cistercians, and their role in the Crusades. But this brought together three different aspects of history in general, three different um, civilizations almost. There was Western Europe, Latin Christendom. There was Eastern Europe, Byzantium, and we have part of this her Byzantine heritage in our own Ukrainian um, culture. And there was the Islamic Middle East. So those three things came together in my master's thesis way, way back. And I received my MA in 1972 on the basis of that, partly on the basis of that thesis. Years later, I uh, undertook to do a doctoral dissertation in medieval history. And I was studying Latin and German and Latin paleography, how to read very old Latin and Latin script. But it bothered me because I was a Ukrainian Canadian of the third generation. Uh, my grandparents were pioneers, Ukrainian pioneers in Western Canada before the First World War. And I didn't grow up uh, with a lot of the culture. I just had the folk culture handed on, on to me and that was it. I had a bit of the, uh, the language, but only a few words. And it bothered me that I was learning uh, to read Latin paleography, but I knew very little about Ukraine and Ukrainians, except from what I knew in Western Canada. So I decided to study it. And I um, wrote to the University of Toronto uh, history department and uh, asked them uh, if they would take me as a doctoral student doing Russia in Eastern Europe with a specialty in Ukraine. I was accepted into the program and uh, I began reading around the subject. They suggested that I read some um, Russian um, literature of the 19th century to get a handle on 
on Eastern Europe generally and on Russia. So I did that. I read Tolstoy and Dostoevsky and all that stuff. And the, the next summer I set out to Europe to go to school in, in Poland actually and do some Polish before uh, undertaking more Ukrainian. I had started Ukrainian at St. Andrew's College at the University of Manitoba. And now I thought I'd give Polish a whack as well. So I went to Poland. But before heading to Eastern Europe, I took a train across Canada to um, Toronto and Montreal. On the train to Montreal, I met a young fellow who had been working in Canada and was from Turkey. He was a very interesting guy, kind of a charismatic guy, but very warm and very friendly. And he told me that he was of Cherkass background, a Circassian, a famous Circassian, supposedly the the most beautiful people in, uh, in, in Turkey were of Circassian descent. And Circassian women in particular were very attractive to the Turks. So anyhow, we got to know each other and he said, why don't you go to Turkey? It's, it's an interesting subject. It's, and, and, and I think being a historian, you'd, be, you'd see a lot there of interest. So before going to study in, in Poland, I went to Turkey and I saw Istanbul. And part of my um, reason for going to Istanbul was to see the great Hagia Sophia mosque there, the, 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 the mosque of, of um, the, the Church of Holy Wisdom, it's sometimes called. You know, that's what Sophia means, wisdom. But I also saw Turkish culture and Ottoman Turkish culture with these beautiful uh, Ottoman uh, uh, architecture and art and palaces and the liveliness of Istanbul, and really I hadn't seen anything that exciting since going to Rome way back in 1969. So um, it really swept me away. From there I went to Poland, studied Polish, and in September was back in Toronto studying uh, Russian and uh, East European history. They didn't offer Ukrainian history in those days. I would have taken it if anybody had offered it, but they didn't offer it. This was in the days before. Paul Robert Ngochi arrived. <laughs> so, um, I, but I tended to take courses uh, with some kind of connection with Ukraine. And that trip to, um, to, to um, Turkey had an effect on me. And uh, I tended to write things that had some kind of Middle East connection with them. And it started with, I think, um, 19th century um, political em emigre named Mikhailo Tchaikovsky, who was at a very funny background. He was primarily a Cossack of, of, um, of uh, Ukrainian background, a descendant of Hetman Bruchovetsky. But he sided with the Poles during the 1830 uh, revolt against Russia. And he wound up in exile in Western Europe and then in Turkey, where he worked against Russian imperial in, in influence in Turkey and tried to work towards a, a free Cossack Ukraine. A dreamy prospect in the 19th century, but still found it very, very interesting. And I did many essays of that type. So this forms, uh, this forms the background of this book on Ukraine in the Middle East. And then when I was uh, um, further on in my graduate studies, just before taking up my doctoral dissertation at the University of Toronto, which was on Mikhail Hrushevsky, the great Ukrainian historian whom I'm sure you've all heard of. I met someone from the Middle East, a beautiful young girl of Kurdish background. Um, her family came from the western part of Iran, uh, Kurdistan, near the, the mountain with the inscription of Darius the Great. Um, some of you who have uh, read history more generally in ancient history will know this very famous uh, monument in the Middle East. So anyhow, I met this, this young lady and she swept me away as well. So that's the second important factor in this book. So I have Turkey, I have Iran, and there's the wider, wider Middle East as well. But I won't bore, bore you with all of that. I'll just uh, say that this particular book uh, tends to talk about um, Ukraine's lost contacts, this, a suppressed kind of contacts with the outside world. Ukraine did have contacts with the outside world throughout the centuries, many of them, and they weren't all bad. You know, the Soviets said everything coming from Western Europe is bad, but everything coming from Russia is good. 
and everything that is good uh, that, that comes from Russia come, uh, comes from uh, that comes from Europe comes via Russia. It's good, and everything else is bad. But when I look at it, I see much, much more than that. There are pilgrims going to the Middle East from Ukraine from medieval times. There are artists going to the Middle East uh, in the 19th century. Uh, Trush went to, went to Egypt and painted the, the, the pyramids. Ilya Repin went to Palestine and was moved by, by what he saw. He was so moved that he couldn't even write about it, he said. So um, people, and then there were more pilgrims in modern times. Sheptitsky himself led a great pilgrimage to Jerusalem in 1906. There were political exiles as well, political emigres working, like uh, Tchaikovsky who worked in, in, in Turkey against Russian influence in the Middle East. There were also political exiles in Iran. There were those Ukrainians in, in, um, who were deported to Central Asia along with the, the, um, the Poles during the Second World War and were eventually led out of those prison camps, uh, crossed to Iran, uh, where they brought typhus, unfortunately, and my, my, uh, one of my wife's um, uh, uncles actually died from it, typhoid, typhoid fever, brought from Central Asia to Iran, to Tehran, during the Second World War. And many of these Poles and, and Ukrainians died at that time, but others survived, went on to Palestine, then to Egypt, where they joined Montgomery's uh, army, the Eighth Army, fighting the Nazis in North Africa. They fought across North Africa and then to uh, Tunisia and then over to Italy and there was a great battle at Monte Cassino. I remember once André Makouch uh, of the University of Toronto, my colleague here, unfortunately died recently. Um, his father was part of that um, army. He was Ukrainian and uh, he, he fought at Monte Cassino and I believe he was wounded there. So um, there are many stories to tell about this, and I tell just a few of them in this particular book. But uh, I thought that somebody should get it started, and so I did this. And um, I'm glad that I did, and I'm glad that it's getting recognition today. So I thank you all for listening to me, and I thank you all for um, awarding me this attention, and I thank the, the Peterson Award once again for recognizing it.